we're getting ready to welcome in uh, Talking Cod Swallop uh, as soon as they're ready. As we're approaching the 2 o'clock hour here, as you guys can see on the progress bar on the stream, over $7,000 raised for the Cancer Research Institute thus far. Just amazing. Amazing stuff. Everybody that's been involved, everybody that's been hanging out in the chat, uh, you guys are just an inspiration. Speaking of inspirations, Gemma and James joining. I have to clean up my kitchen. Street. I'll be back in like 10 minutes, but hi. What else? Okay, I fun. thought you were part, supposed to be part of the show. Oh, he'll be back. No, no, he's, 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 glaze he has, all over him. If he's got stuff he's got to do, he's got to do it. Yeah. To be fair, things. to be fair, your uh, your donuts did look lovely. So are we yeah. wait, we are talking about donuts, right? This isn't a euphemism, some some element of this broadcast that I've completely missed, is it? Don't ask. If it me is, that. Where, just, why was I not allowed in to see this sort of stuff? Well, you were allowed in, but you just chose not to click on the link. I ah. was <laughs> just wondering, yeah, what donuts based stuff did I miss? <laughs> Yeah, it was a fun segment for sure. Well, welcome, guys. Talking Cod Thank Swallow. You. Uh, Thank you. Tell, I'm going to let you guys do your thing, but tell us a little bit about it. I mean, I, this, this is your first time on live stream, right? So what's what's the show all about? This yeah. Is a, yeah, this is our first time. This is the brainchild of my wonderful co-host, Gemma. This is her creation. I was just lucky enough to be pulled along for the ride. So, Gemma, give us some history. It's in, just one interesting thing. I'm doing that because you are to that direction on me. Okay, well, I'm above you here, so oh, I right. need to go like that to poke at you. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so talking cods, well, I'll, I'll do it in brief, but uh, basically, yeah, it was me who started it about four or five years ago. And, um, yeah, and it just I wanted to do something funny and do something that was – entertaining for like at least once a week you know kind of thing um and it grew from there really and i decided to then bring james on board and um yeah because initially i started it out that it was actually going to be like um interviewing people uh, on a weekly basis but trying to schedule people to actually you know always uh you know, be there and stuff like that it was always a bit hard so yeah, so brought James on board, and uh, we haven't looked back since, really, have we? So we have got some crazy stuff that we get on with, um, but also we're just pretty much two people that just sit in a room, or separate rooms, but you know, on a podcast mic and uh, chat away, really, isn't it, James? So yeah, it's it's a, a it's a very interesting thing because the way I first got involved was I'd had some involvement being on podcasts, but I was a big fan of podcasts, and then I reached out. Uh, I was trying to learn more about them, and Gemma was kind enough to respond to me. Didn't have a clue who it was, but was kind enough to respond to me, talk to me, brought me on as a guest, and then clearly she was happy enough with what she saw. I was in some sort of self punishment mode and decided to get me on as a co-host. I mean, I say she saw a good thing in me. She secretly probably says self punishment, self flagellation. But yeah, it's been great. And we do, we have the great thing where we're having fun, we're having a laugh. We just got all the crazy stuff that's going on in, in our lives and in the week and things that we've enjoyed and had fun. And we yeah. do do interviews with people as well. And Gemma was kind enough to give me my own little corner of the Codswell world where I can do cinematic stuff. Uh, our recent one, we actually discussed, me, Gemma and I discussed Mean Girls. Did a review of that one? Yeah, that comes out this fun. Sunday, doesn't it? So, yeah. Yep. So, that, uh, shameless plug for our future episode there. But we also do some interviews with people who've worked in the industry, things like that as well. It's all good fun. It's all enjoyable. Yeah, definitely. So, but I feel I feel as though, because I haven't introduced us as a, as a thing, I need to do my little intro. So, I'm going to start with... Welcome to this next hour's worth of Talking Codswallop podcast. You're in for a treat, maybe, maybe not, who knows. <laughs> I am Gemma. I am, as always, James. And yeah. if, you have a, if you've never heard us before, uh, or you've never seen us before, this is the time to do it. And if you've heard us before, you're now getting to see us. So it's yes. a double treat. <laughs> and we do often know what we're doing, but... We do. Maybe, maybe not. See, 
the, the fun thing is when we're doing this, I always think of that bit out of Jane Silent Bob Reboot. There's a script. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was a strike back, was it? There's a script. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> There's planning for us. What? Really? <laughs> so, I mean, let's start with uh, mm, how stuff. everybody's week's been. So, like, Gerald, are you joining us? Did you want to say how your week's been? Well, I'm glad to be here because, you know, I work in retail, so I've been oh, okay. uh, working 10 hour days up until today. Wow. So today's a good day. Uh, but, you know, mm -hmm. working in that business um, and dealing with customers sometimes, it's not always the you know, greatest thing in the world. Um, no. But this event is just something to look forward to really all year. And the last couple of weeks, the excitement's been building. So mm -hmm. all things considered, it is a great week, shaping up to be a great week. And I'm uh, super excited for, for this weekend. We did get a couple uh, donations. I just wanted to shout out Owen Edmonds and James Higson both donated. Oh, Thanks. thank so, you guys. Yeah. Good stuff. Good yeah, guys. Cause, thank you. Yeah. Cause we call our listeners. Um, you, you possibly don't know this, but we call our listeners salty tadpoles. Now you can use your imagination and work out what we mean by that. Or I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Be, being yeah, of me. innocent mind I just say it's fish it's fish related yeah, right. <laughs> it's filthy. It's uh, Nick may have spoiled this a little bit but I guess the things that you're salty about in, in pop culture and society or... oh no sorry because our <laughs> so basically our listeners are called um, salty tadpoles so okay. basically sperm <laughs> Uh, <laughs> at, that, at that point, you know, I was going to say to Gemma, tread gently, but she went, she did the bull in the china shop. Yeah. And just, whoosh, whoosh. I didn't We're live, but there. we don't have to be, yeah. work, you know, we don't have to be suitable for work or whatever, do we? So, um, but yeah, the podcast, yeah, Codswallop means um, basically it's like um, crap, um, rubbish, talking, oh, talking trash, rubbish, isn't it? sorry, in your talking case. Rubbish. It's like gibberish, talking gibberish, I guess. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sounds cool. Or shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm trying cool. to be, I'm, I'm obviously far, far too, uh, you know, trying to keep it far too clean. As I said, bull China shop Gemma. <laughs> Coming but in hot. No, yeah. Massive thank you to our two salty tadpoles for the uh, donations there. That yes, is incredible. Thank and thank you for watching you. as well, guys. <laughs> Oh, are you ready uh, now, Nick? Nick's coming back. He's got all the glaze off. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's playing with his laptop in the corner, and now he's with us. Yes, he, uh, he has so much to do there at, at the mothership. You yeah. know, uh, me and yeah, Dan are usually on site with him, and we're remote this year, so I feel bad. He's probably has like ten screens in front of him trying to figure everything out. <laughs> he has that look of someone who's very, very focused on something. Yeah, 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 exactly. But uh, to be honest, yeah, we're probably, yeah, we're so laid back. It's uh, hard for us to focus on things most of the time. But <laughs> we're so we... laid back. Nine, nine percent of the time people think we're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wake them up. Yeah. No, don't poke the bear when it's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so, James, how's your week been? You done anything fun? It's not been too bad. I've managed to catch up and watch a bit of stuff on the old, uh, on the old, uh, you know, TV stuff, downloading internet, etc. The usual stuff. I have got some wonderful codswallop that falls into what I've done this week. The stuff oh, that's that's, uh, that's that's that has poked the bear. Uh, how have you been? Yeah, yeah. Again, not too bad. It's been like a working week. Obviously, I've been covering for somebody else, so it's been quite exhausting this week. But I also well, I don't work in retail, but I do work with customers, mm. so I do understand where you're coming from with yeah. that. See, so it, the the comment of the customer is always right is bullshit. Yeah, we 100%. all know that it's complete and utter bullshit. Yeah, unless you, of course, are the customer, at which point you know you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, honestly, I agree with that. That you know, it's it's so horrible because it's like oh, they, they really do live by that rule. It's like. Mm -hmm. In England now, we've um, we've started this new thing with regards to driving and like pe drivers versus pedestrians kind mm -hmm. of thing. And uh, sorry, I talk with my hands, so you're gonna have to watch my hands as I go go like this. But um, yeah, we 
it's all I'm not even really 100% what the rules are because I haven't really been following them but it's like if there's <clears throat> if there's a pedestrian who's trying to cross the road uh you you have to sort of halt you know stop really fast almost so you know sort of thing to let them cross the road and I don't know I've kind of lost my point of why I was going with that so I'm sorry. Say, <laughs> uh, uh, what I got a with your hands yeah. As an emotist and a pedestrian, that really does fill you full of confidence for you around, Jim. She's there, well, I haven't really stood it. I'm not sure he wore what it is. So when some poor pedestrian's clinging to the bonnet of a car, <laughs> yeah, what, that'll be the excuse. I have to read it. Yeah, be I am. Fine. <laughs> be fine. Um, no pedestrians were hurt in this yeah. conversation, by the way. It's all good. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Should we move on to our codswallops? And yes. uh so if you if you do yours first and then hopefully mm -hmm. by then Nick will be back and uh so I believe he's got one as well that you wanted to bring to the table. So my codswallop ties in perfectly to our early conversation about the fact that the customer is always right. In this case, they were right because it was me. I was the customer. <laughs> uh, so, but so you go out your way. Will I name names? Yes, I will. So the Nationwide Building Society. So I go all the way to go and do something, which is change some details. That in itself isn't a major problem. You can do it in the branch. It's great to get it sorted. This is the one that gets my go, and I'd love input from both of you and for anybody else who's who's listening. So I go in. They can't uh, print me off a list of my accounts. They can't help me look at moving something to a better based account. They tell me I have to go home and do it all online. So the question I'm going to ask is this. What is the point of the branch? What's the point of going there? What honestly is the point of going? Because if you go in and they can, and the other thing that became interesting is I actually could have changed some things I needed online anyway. What's the point? If they literally will say, well, we'll send you some links. You can only do it online. We can't print you anything out. We can't say anything about your accounts. Mm. But if you go back online, uh, online, go home or, and go online, you can do it. Well, I get. I honestly, I honestly want to say to the guy, this was the manager. I want to go. Why are you here? Yeah. What purpose do you serve? What? what... <laughs> is there <gasps> is there stuff that you can only do at the branch, or is it the only stuff? You, well. The only stuff you could do is get cash out, but yeah, true. to be fair, uh, you could get cash out the cash machine in the wall that's there <laughs> that's for the true. branch. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, James Hickson um, says um, that you should just buy Bitcoin and uh, then it would problem solved. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Bitcoin's crashed out recently, so this might be the best time to buy Bitcoin. Who knows? Uh, but <laughs> possibly. But no, I mean, it is. I can see some of the benefits of why they would be there as a branch because, you know, people, if you're older, maybe you don't use the internet and you need to get money out or you can't use the whole wall, you can get money out. But it comes back to the original question. What if you can't use the internet? What if you don't have the access? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't get my head around the fact that they couldn't do the simplest thing of just running me a list of things off. It does seem a bit crazy, to be completely honest, because it's like, isn't that, I don't mean this horribly, but isn't that their job? To well, you would think so. And that. the thing is, it, it didn't even lead me to want to have a conversation with this guy. I literally want to get in and out as quickly as possible once he's, the guy had done the stuff. And he wasn't by, by any means, he wasn't nasty, there were no problems with him. He was a nice enough guy, but it, I literally was just like, Eh? <laughs> and as soon as it happened, I thought that'd be a great one to do on the show. Yes, I literally couldn't get my head around that. Couldn't fathom it at all. Yeah, I'm sure it was. It's a weird one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does sound annoying. So, but yeah, I I don't really know what to say. But you know, it's kind of it's a tricky one, though, isn't it? Because it's like if that's his his you know if that's their policies or whatever, and he's mm -hmm. not able to actually. Uh, do the thing that you're after but I mean, it I does do, seem I, a bit crazy i do get that but it's also not going to be much fun for them because surely they're going to get flack of people 
and they yeah. can't do anything about it. And you've seen this with other providers; they're doing the same thing. They only have to say one bank, one you know, I have to say bank, but one you know desk till area open. They only can do certain things on on say they're open on a Saturday. There's only certain very specific tasks they can do. So it it not only infuriates the customer; it's going to create problems the staff because the staff are going to get flack off people coming in saying to them this is a terrible service it's just a, it's a difficult one all around and it's one that i don't have the power to change but i'm still venting my spleen as they say what the hell the term is on the yeah. fact that it's it's an annoying one <laughs> it is a very annoying one yeah absolutely i agree with that definitely so did you have any other cods wallops or Absolutely. well it's interesting it ties in to something we were discussing earlier which is the fact that we talked about cars mm -hmm. and believe it or not salty tab bowls and listeners in other areas of the world because we've gone multi-streaming this time and people are listening in and seeing us um jim and i do talk outside this medium believe it or and not we discuss yeah. we, believe it or not we do uh and Gemma and i were discussing <laughs> The wonderful thing that is the price of petrol in this country, how it's going up and up and up. And this is, I think, happening across the, the globe anyway, but it's yeah. a big area of consternation in the UK. And interestingly, in case you are wondering why I keep looking that way, it's because Gemma is on that side of my screen. I'm not just staring some random stuff over this way, because in that case, I'd just be looking at a speaker. Uh, but we're discussing the price of petrol. And Gemma was saying, like, I put £15 in, it's done nothing, raised nothing. Yeah. Nothing's happened with the car. Price well, that, just going up that was up. a bit spooky anyway, but are you going to carry on with that? I suppose, actually, let's go, let you carry on with that. So, sorry. Oh, no, that would I'll, have been I'll, an edit, I'll, everyone. <laughs> I'll get to the point because Gemma's car suddenly, the the uh, the gauge for the, the petrol raised, and I made the point that the car's demonically possessed. Yeah. Uh, which would make you think of the car Christine in the the uh, the Stephen King novel. Yeah. Film. But we got to this interesting thing. That shocked and could it appall me? No, I, it, maybe it did appall me slightly. But what did you tell me, Gemma, about <laughs> your car? Well, I said, well, its name is Loki, so of course it's going to cause me a few problems. And which was kind of cool as a name, but I was like, you name your car? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I name it in that uh, inanimate objects. Yes. <laughs> But, I mean, you spend Why half your you... life in your car. Sometimes you just what? need to name your car so that you can talk to it and go, come on, Loki, let's get that yeah. extra bit of juice so you can get to the petrol station. You know, everyone talks to their car, I'm sure of it. It's not just what are me. The name, what are the names if you given previous cars? My first car was Henry because it was a H-Reg. Okay, I like um, the thinking, kind of. Yeah, um... I'm drawing a couple of blanks. My last car was called Frank, and it was purple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that after Garmin? <laughs> no, I don't know why. I just called it Frank because um, it was a, such a girly-looking car, and I thought I'm going to man it up by calling it Frank. And I think I've had – I can't remember. There was a, a Beatrix, I think, was one of them. So I had a female car at one point. But uh, – Oh, Bertha. Sorry, Bertha, not oh, Beatrix. Bertha. Yeah. See, the reason it's a bit codswallpy for me is I never, there's no history with me or my family, to my knowledge, naming it, giving names to our cars. But then I had to think about this properly and I have to make a confession. I do name my car in a sense. It's a lot, but it's very, see, with me, it's family and tor in orientated names that I give my car. You yeah. Know, son of a mother. Um, <laughs> very family oriented all g you know all nice g-rated family orientated names honestly lots of yeah as i said mother son of a yeah uh, <laughs> but I then do, yeah don't you live like quite a boring life in that case because you know but what but it's just pure it's it, with my, me it's it's what you would expect from you Gemma, which is anger and swearing at the, the car uh <laughs> well, but yeah, it's never it's never been a huge thing for me naming. It. I, I I can see why why people would do it. I do occasionally nickname mine the Black Beast, so I have to admit I have a, I have given it a name sometimes. Well, that's uh, naming it. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly 
exactly it. That's exactly yeah. naming it, James. Generally with me, though, it's more foul. It's more, you know, family-orientated names when things go wrong, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, you know, still, it's fun. It's fun to name things, okay? It, it is. And my final codswarp is one that's kind of it's it's something that's only only come to the fore recently so we've all had to contend with the fun that it is that has been and is still ongoing the awful covid 19 pandemic mm. we've not got over I've it never heard of that no some things have been, no, <laughs> have been <laughs> relaxed some people are feeling a bit less freaked out by it some people want to be vaccinated, some people don't. But you generally, we're getting to a point where we think we've hit a bit of an... See, I'm talking my hands as well. It must be a yeah. cod thing. But we're thinking we've hit an even keel. Yeah. Would you agree? We're thinking yep. things have levelled out a bit. We think we might not need to be so scared, not so terrified to go uh, out. We don't even have to always wear masks when we're going out now either. No. Um, I was going to say, I keep saying yeah to you, but actually I think with regards to like the press and like the mm -hmm. news and whatnot, they are kind of given the impression that nothing's going on. But I don't know. I've seen cases rising all over the place, so I don't know. But here's the interesting thing. So we think we've come to a possibly less freaked out, scary point of that. What's the one? What, what's now happened? Monkeypox. <laughs> really? What's this about? So we have now got, this is a disease, I think, that's generally in sort of like uh, African countries, and it's quite a, a horrendous disease to get, and it potentially can be killer. And we started out only a few days ago where they were saying, I think, two people down south had got it, and it looks pretty awful. You get all boils and horrible swellings and ailments, and I think it, it can be fatal, but they were going, we've got two versions of it down south, the quarantine, they're in hospital, we're dealing with it. We're now at 20. Just a quick question. Yeah. When you say down south, do you mean like near where I live? I'm thinking like London away from what I've understood. That's fine. It's far enough away. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you live in an area where they have like headless sex dolls floating in water. So possibly, <laughs> possibly this scary pox might not be the worst thing that is the area. <laughs> we did start the plague. So let's face it. <laughs> Actually, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't be so much for shock than if it got there. But no, I'm hoping it doesn't. But yeah, you're just thinking it's it's not. It, you want to kind of say it's funny, but it's not. But it's like we've yeah. only got we we kind of got used to one thing, and then another horrendous virus hits us. It's an it's uh, it's an old shit moment. I'm hoping it doesn't get any worse. But it's just like one of these things where you just want to like you know the desk and bang bang whack your head against it because you had something else who's happened. Someone someone the, in the chat has just written that Gemma lives in the English equivalent of Myrtle Beach. So I'm yeah. I'm sort of glancing at my phone because I'm not sure how to use the chat on here. So um but yeah, I'm glancing at my phone very quickly and looking at occasional um messages that we're getting in from uh from the people who are actually viewing us right now. So excellent, excellent. And uh, are they all I'm assuming they're all seeming happy. And no, they really can't agree. stand you, James. They think that you're hog hogging the mic and you're not letting me talk. That's, that's so unusual because normally they, they're, it's full agreement and love and worship of me. Uh, <laughs> am I hogging the mic? But of course I'm hogging the mic because this was my cotswold obsession. So for you people who really want to listen to Gemma and the woman who has named her car is a wonderful person, a listening area full of, you know, strange sex things of naked men on hills and... <laughs> beheaded sex dolls we don't yeah. see a link there uh yeah. i shall hand over to the wonderful Gemma, who is again that way for me yeah. so <laughs> Gemma, yep <yeah. laughs> so wh where am i for you you're underneath me i'm underneath which is where is like, you should be james <laughs> this is like the weirdest version of celebrity squares ever so Gemma, what are your cods warp <laughs> well are you ready are you sitting at the edge of your seat i have four I'm so, gonna strap. I'm gonna strap myself in for this one. Yeah, <laughs> closer to the mic though. <laughs> okay. But it Actually, also gave I... a wonderful view of the Codswold T. Yes, we have both got our t-shirts on, um, but we unfortunately cannot be seen. But there you go. Yeah. Gem Gemma's was hidden by the skinned hamster. I know we can Ooh. see it now. <laughs> now I've got to position it so I don't. I look all right again. <laughs> no, I'm not that vain, people. Don't worry. Um, no, she is. She is. She really is. Yeah. Don't tell my secrets. Right. 
my codswallop. Actually, I'm going to make it mm-hmm. five five codswallops. Five. And uh, yeah. Is your fifth one the wonderful blonde haired guy you work with? <laughs> no, no, you're my third one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be the first one, the major one on the list. <laughs> Underlined about nine times. <laughs> okay, so I think one that we can all agree with for everybody who is on this live stream, um, whether viewing it or, you know, us actually being on it, um, that I think cancer is going to be a codswallop. Mm-hmm. Because you know what? Fuck cancer. Cancer horrible. It's uh, disgusting. It's a disgusting disease and it just needs to go away. So if anybody has got the money who can donate to this live stream then that would be absolutely amazing because obviously the money is going to um you know trying to find a cure for cancer so which is obviously very good so yes i agree, I agree with you 100 percent. i'd just like to say wow Gemma, what a great way to make me look like a complete shit bag i know <laughs> <laughs> look at that people how how prof- how great and professional is that from Gemma? she's let me completely vent my spleen go about all the things that annoying me and then she's like you know she's going right where can where can i get him i know i'll mention the exact pos the the positive thing we're doing raising money to try and stop and deal with this disease and yeah hats off to you Gemma. that's a good one <laughs> exactly nice it's shame, in turn it's, it's a shame that the the big boss man who's now just put his uh ears in didn't actually hear it unfortunately but you know <laughs> Are you there now, Nick? <laughs> I'm here. Hello. 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 Yeah, we were How just we moving doing? on to our codswallop. So my first codswallop was cancer. Ooh. So, uh, you know, I did a really good spill there. But uh, no, so on a serious note, you know, it's affected people in my life and stuff like that mm-hmm. as well. So it's uh, it's one of those nasty ones, isn't it? So Absolutely. Yeah. But I thought I'd get the serious one out of the way so that we could move on to the, the funny codswallops and then we will um and then we will get on to yours nick it's yeah i was gonna say is it okay to call you nick or would you prefer nicholas you can call me whatever you want okay good to know (laughs) i'm not picky okay just don't call me gerald that's the worst name ever (laughs) now now i've got the urge to call you that (laughs) i'm gonna call you alas Oh, Fine. Nice. It's good. I'm good with it. <laughs> right. So my second God's Wallop um, is, okay, I understand that people actually really enjoy this game. Um, I understand this because I see the notifications all the time on Facebook. It is notifications for Wordle. Oh, now, if you, if you enjoy the game, fantastic. Amazing. You know, you do you. But why do I have to see, as a person who doesn't play it, why do I have to see every day that people are like, oh, I've got it on the sixth time. Oh, I've got it on the third time. Oh, I've got it on this time. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. No, seriously, it's just, I I don't mind if people play and like, well done to them if they get the word. But, and I've got no interest in playing it, but oh my God, seeing the constant. um, It's. It's it, this. It's it's the it's this this uh, generation's version of Pokemon. Well, I mean, I like Pokemon, so let's leave that <laughs> alone. Eh? <laughs> it's exactly why I said it. <laughs> but you don't see like every time I catch a Pokemon that a uh, yeah. notification comes up on my Facebook. Yeah. Can saying, I, say, I, be terrifi- I, I would be terrified though if you like you actually had a visible Pokemon you could show to people. <laughs> I can show you plenty of Pokemon on my phone. <laughs> They're all in this room no. right now. <laughs> oh, God. But no, I do like I do like Pokemon. But that gets me out walking. It gets me out socializing with people, you know. So it's going, a form of going, exercise. I was gonna say, Gemma, if you've got a room full of the drugs are wearing off. Um, <laughs> no, I don't get word either. It's no. Yeah. No, I don't get it. So, no. um, okay. So this is my third one, James. Are you prepared? I think so. Remember, my third one is related to you. So that doesn't surprise me. And you have been there somewhere <laughs> on the list. 
<laughs> yeah, you already got the. Well, I've already said you got the knife in because I went through all my cod hooks, venting my spleen, and yeah. then you come up with a really, you know, professional, positive, worthy thing to promote what we're doing, why we're here, and you make me look like a complete piece of shit. So anyway. <laughs> And that's the only reason expected, I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have expected anything less. <laughs> well, so I'm actually going to ask your opinion, uh, Nick. I'm going to call you Nick again because otherwise, if I keep f- forgetting your name, Olas, um, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> um, so you know when you you send out messages to people. And, uh, they, you know, they can be lengthy messages or they can be short messages, whatever, but they need an answer to them. And you get the kind of response of, I'll see what I can do. Oh. Or, or, uh, or um, I can neither confirm or deny. <laughs> James? These are all acceptable see- answers. These I don't know where he excellent. is. But These are all excellent, you- acceptable answers. I'd also just say for another way you can positively respond to things. So I see no problem with what you've said. It's this. <laughs> James always like if I was to show you our Facebook chat, <laughs> it would it would constantly be Facebook messages, and then it's yeah. like they get bigger, <laughs> yeah, and then they get smaller. <laughs> It's simply because I, it's simply because I know that really does wind Gemma up. <laughs> the thing is, it doesn't wind me up anymore. I'm not really that bothered uh, by it. Oh, anymore. you become immune to it. Excellent. Yeah. I'm gonna find something else then. What are the, yeah, I'll have to have a think about this. Yeah. Do you like clowns? I'm not bothered by clowns. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you'll find something that annoys me. You always do. <laughs> I'm right. I do. I work hard on this. Make it, I've got a whole flow chart going. <laughs> and my final personal cod swallop is, hi, mum, first of all. <laughs> She's watching from the other room. Um, when my mum, or sorry, family member, don't want to give it away, uh, when somebody, <laughs> my mum, really enjoys, <laughs> she knows I was going to say this one anyway, really enjoys the song. She tends to play it so many times that it becomes overkill. Like a few years back, she found out about Disturbed because of like Sound of Silence. Mm-hmm. And uh, she really likes that song. Fair enough. It's a good song. It, well, obviously a cover, but, you know, still a good version mm-hmm. of the song. And um, she said uh, she just constantly played it, played it, played it. And I I said, did you want to actually listen to some real Disturbed? Because like, I've been a fan for like 14 odd years. <laughs> but no, she's she's mildly Disturbed as a fan, basically. I'm the proper Disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> she likes mildly version. But yeah, it, it did so get to the think... point that any time those songs are played now, it's just like, oh, my God, I just I just want to I just want to leave. I just want to leave the house. <laughs> And th- and this is why your mum's leaving everything to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's happening. You know, we all well, know it's the truth. This is why it's happening. <laughs> well, my brother doesn't get a look in at all. Oh God, no, no, he's been completely removed from the equation. It's gone. Oh, it's no. all coming to me. Yeah. Oh, Lee, but, and, sorry. Ma- mainly, but yeah, sorry, dude. But it's mainly because you know I appreciated the potato story properly. <laughs> <laughs> right, people, people who never listened to us will be completely lost on this one. But yeah, there's a long standing potato story that was part of Gemma's family law. It's not a family war, it was a joke with my family. Fa- I'm gonna, law. oh, law, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I was gonna, um, I'm gonna explain it. So, if there's any under 18s listening, then, um, you know, you your ears prick up right now. Put your fingers in your ears because you're not allowed to know the answer. <laughs> so anyway, this is your warning that live stream for the cure is a not safe for work event. <laughs> exactly, it is. I'm right. <laughs> oh, good because I've already sworn a few times. Um, Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's there's also just very, an ass I've behind thought... me at literally like all times during the event. So yeah, I noticed that. I mean, what I, what I would also <laughs> say is that when it comes to the swearing from Gemma, I've kind of started blocking out because I've become used to it. It's sort of like, you know, kidnap victims when they 
<laughs> Tiny little violin playing. It's all good. Right, so this family tradition of ours. So we've got this thing that has gone through generations and it's uh it starts with what's round and brown all the year round. So and then this is told to you like say when you're five, I don't know, some sort of age like that. But then you don't find out the answer until you're 18. So when I turned 18, I was like, oh, brilliant. I'm going to find out the answer, you know, because it is frustrating not knowing that for however many years it is. So it's like, what's round and brown all the year round? So I believe that I was mm-hmm. told that it was a potato. <laughs> After I did the recording, I asked my mum, who then told me that it was an asshole. <laughs> Yeah. It's more the fact that you've been this has been built up for so many years for you to find I, this out. Yeah. Well I think what's happened is is that it's actually my brother told me it was a potato just to like piss me off, you know, like for years to come. So basically when I was thirty eight, instead of eighteen, when I was thirty eight, mm-hmm. I found out the answer to this riddle. They obviously, <laughs> they obviously felt you were old enough to take the information on and to be able to process it, that it wouldn't traumatise you too much. <laughs> no, I suspect exactly. it traumatised you just a little bit, didn't it? It was just a little bit of a bit of a come down and a shock that it's that yes. sort of thing. But, you know, these things happen. <laughs> exactly. Right. And my fifth and final cod's wallop. So I've been saving them up. So that's why there's so many, because I normally bring three. Because <laughs> I'm a really pissed off person. <laughs> yeah, so you're very angry. <laughs> yeah, I was going to get it in there before you like, told before you said it. <laughs> it's, it's like working with She-Hulk. Really, they should have just cast you in that. Yeah, they should have. I mean, I I deserve the role. I mm. definitely could green up. That's all good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this one is actually not my cod's wallop. It's my mum's cod's wallop. So she's very artsy and craftsy. So, Mm -hmm. and uh, very, very talented as well. So I I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's a Deadpool riding a unicorn on the wall there. And uh, she actually, she actually, uh, you know, drew that. So, you know, it's very, very good, but obviously that's quite far away. So I don't know if you can really see it or not, especially with my head in the way. Yeah, kind of. You can make out something. Yeah. So unfortunately I can't take it off the wall to show you properly, but anyway. And... So anyway, so she's really artsy and crafty. So she was make she's been making some seat covers for our conservatory seats because they just needed nice. freshening up and stuff. So when uh, she was busy away on the uh, sewing machine, couldn't think what the word was then. Busy away on the sewing machine, and all of a sudden I hear this big "Oh for fuck's sake!" Rah, rah, rah. Yes, my mum has got a potty mouth too. I, I think I know where you get it from. <laughs> yeah, I think I do too. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, 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 no. So anyway, I, I mean, I don't know if she was pulling those faces. I could only hear what she was saying to me. Um, well, saying to herself from a distance. Turns out that she'd been sewing all of the, the seams, but <laughs> the, sewing, <laughs> the sewing machine had lost its thread. So it wasn't actually sewing. So, <laughs> with your heart, just... <laughs> how many hours had she been doing this? Oh, it was only yeah. It wasn't for hours. It was only right, for that's like positive. That's positive. Yeah, <laughs> but it, yeah, still the fact that she, you know, she was doing it, and it was, you know. <laughs> Tell, it's all right. I, I think I know how you can get out of this problem. Well, your mum can. I'll relinquish some of the money that's coming to me and she yeah. can put it towards buying thread. So it's a win win for all of us. <laughs> it is a win win for all of us. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah. So those are my cod swallops. So, oh, Excuse appa- me. she's coming in to like tell me <laughs> off, apparently. <laughs> Hello. You tell everybody Welcome to stories. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> now fuck off. <laughs> Ooh, she's, she's always got. She's always got to get the limelight. Christ, she's well, always got to have the limelight. Yeah. Well, you know. What can I say? 
Is she the best person to have on out of the two of you? Tough one, to, tough one, tough one. It's a hard one to argue. Oh, I'm getting that look. But the thing is, again, I've got to protect my inheritance. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never, yes, I would never keep uh, take anything seriously on what <laughs> James is saying. So, <laughs> but right. So, Nick, are you ready with your cod yeah. swallops now? I am. Mine are just in general. Okay, okay. that's fine. We, we like that. We like that. Yep. The, it doesn't, it, to be honest, we do it so often that we have to in, uh, come up with new and exciting ways to piss ourselves off. So, <laughs> not that difficult, though, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, so. I well, I don't. I granted, I work from home uh, now, so I mm -hmm. haven't had to deal with this in quite some time. Um, but you know, I have to drive a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, when I'm commuting, if I have to use a highway, and I don't know if this is as big of a problem across the pond as it is here, uh, but why do people not understand how to use a highway on and off ramps? <laughs> To accelerate to the rate of speed yeah. to merge with traffic at speed instead of I'm going to go 20 mm -hmm. to try to merge with this traffic that's doing 70, you're going to die. <laughs> oh, I've seen it all. I've seen stuff. Yeah. It'll, yeah, I always like when people have missed the actual thing and at the last minute it's high speed. They have to like get onto it. <laughs> <laughs> they got to like right at that last second, like across three lanes, yep. like, yeah. Oh, oh. yes. Oh, yes. That's maddening. Uh, I oh, nothing. Uh, driver's licenses, in my opinion, are way too easy to get in America. I don't know if they're complicated or difficult to get in the UK, but uh, way too easy here. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't. Well, I don't know. To be honest, it took me a couple of attempts to get my driving license, but that was. To be honest, I would have got a perfect license. The uh, you know, I would have mm -hmm. got a perfect score the first time, near enough, because I only had a couple of minors. So you, you have to have like a certain amount of minors. And then if you've always got a major, you get failed. Mm -hmm. Literally around the last corner, I accidentally went slightly up on the curb. On the curb and it was uh, it was a major. So I was like, <laughs> so now I'm going to have to redo that. Away. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was a pain in the ass. But, yeah. I mean, I consider myself quite a good driver. But I do understand where you're coming from with regards to this... Uh, yeah merging onto well what we call motorways over here but mm -hmm. yeah same thing whereas i know i'm a good driver I drive he's an audi, audi driver <laughs> so i know i'm a good driver ascension to godhood here <laughs> oh my goodness uh and then i guess like the only other thing that really and i mean really just is talking during movies um <sighs> Like, oh. I can do it if, if it's a movie I've seen before and I'm with friends and it's, I don't, then I don't care. Uh, but if I've never seen it, shut up. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. <laughs> but that, to be fair, I, it's interesting that we both agreed at exactly the same time, Gemini. Yeah. But it's also interesting that it's one of the things that's put me off going back to cinemas because I'm, I, I have memories of. Yeah. It always happens. Every time you go, and it's always, whenever you go, you're always somehow inevitably seated next to the person that's making the most noise. Ne never yeah. fails. Absolutely never fails. The person that's watching the movie and has to loudly react to everything that they see. Um, like, oh, that guy came out of that room. <gasps> like, calm the fuck down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't mind reactions like that, because that's kind of maybe human nature but yeah the talking part no i agree with that completely because i think was it the i think it was quiet place was at the cinema that was that silent one mm -hmm. wasn't it yeah so i was sat next to a couple that were just whispering to each other and, and eating crisps i was like are you serious <laughs> like it's a practically <laughs> silent film you know the people are whispering and it's so hard to hear you know and you're sat there going <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, I have been in a position where I've turned around and told people to shut up at the cinema where they've been talking. 
it has worked. I've had to do it at concerts. That's where it really pisses me off. When you're at a concert and you've got people incessantly making noise behind you. Oh my you god! The money for something. Yeah. And I'm the angry one. <laughs> <laughs> I found his trigger. You would start yeah. to see the rage <laughs> boiling up in him. <laughs> it's a 90 year old man I'm behind him at the concert to... and he's like get out <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, my dear. blood pressure's descending again now it's all good that's all right see that's why we do cod swallops at the beginning mm. so then we can have a bit of a laugh and then you know move on <laughs> just want to say nick very nice microphone I right? It's aren't I love this thing too. I just got this. God, when did I get this? I don't even know when, but I love it. I absolutely adore it. Are those studios yeah. you're wearing too, or no? These? Yeah. No, 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 no. They but look similar nice to, to mine. We've... Yeah, we are almost going for a very similar thing. Same microphone, same headphone design. I mean, is my fluffy north muff not good enough for you guys? <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, it's not. I think it, it's wonderful. I mean, the hamster gave its life up. For a wonderful, perfect thing to be on. I'm mansion. just typing that in chat now. Hashtag Fluffy Muff, because that's going to take off yes. over there. <laughs> yep. It will. It'll go down very well. We've, yeah. discer- we've <laughs> determined uh, in this year's live stream for The Cure, especially that our chat loves uh, pornography and erotica and uh, all things in between. <laughs> ah, well, that's good to know. <laughs> that's very good to know. Right. If you donate, <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that. We're going to go X rated. We always have said we should have a cod bob. I'm going to switch this over segment. to our porn hub it channel. It. Hang on. Yep. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do an OnlyFans segment where we show our toes. Can't <laughs> get me leg up that eye. <laughs> That's why it's OnlyFans, Jem. You see, that's why it's OnlyFans. You've got to make them work for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so have we had, how much is the target at the moment then? Or, you know, not the target, sorry. How much is the total at the moment? We are currently sitting at, se- where, God, I've got too many windows, 71, 40, 74 toward the goal. Do you want to know uh, who's donated during the segment so far? Yes, that would be lovely. Thank you. Yeah, because I did ask for the um, little brings and the things to turn off. Because I know how easily distracted I get, and I probably would jump out <laughs> of my skin if it comes on as well. <laughs> yeah, so we show had... stuff. She's like a magpie. <laughs> yeah. We had Owen Edmonds, 2505, and he said salty tadpole. That's probably something you guys get more than I do. Uh, yeah. James yeah. Higson, $6.87. All of the five Ps for Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> yes respect can you do pennies and two peas as well for Gemma? chris yaney seven dollars and 42 cents thank you chris uh steve everything i learned from movies who's coming up right after you guys uh donated 69 dollars and 69 cents because he realized he hadn't donated yet today <laughs> and then timmy dawson donated 2505 i'd like to make this donation in honor of my friend suzanne Thank you so, Aww. so much. Thank you so much to everybody that donated. And there's still time to show some love mm. to Gemma and James Codswallop. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being here. You're, you're absolutely well. Well, thank it's you for having us. I think, you know, we're very British, so we like to say thank you as well. But uh, yeah, we, we've had a blast. So I know we've still got like 10, 15 minutes or whatever. We're but just going to sit good. here silently for the rest of our time. I'd yeah. say you're more amazing for, be, for running and doing this whole thing. Yeah. So I bow thank down you. to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I just yeah, got to because... make donuts for the past three hours. I'm so, I'm 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 high on life right now. <laughs> I know I was watching and I was saliv- salivating. Going, I don't I mess up words, so that's why I hesitate with words a minute. But uh, yeah, I was literally like, oh, I really could eat that donut right now. <laughs> donut. <laughs> I I miss this and literally had no idea what she was talking about. I wondered about you know when you said the pawn element or the pawn hub element. Mm-hmm. I wondered if there's something I missed. What? How? How did he actually make the holes? <laughs> oh, Gem. There was a point. There was a point when when uh, the the donuts were were being, uh, we'll say, probed digitally. Uh, you know, and then we were talking about filling them, but I don't have uh, piping tips, so I can't penetrate into the crust and squirt that mm-hmm. filling into there. You know, you know this. You know this. There's somebody somewhere who's getting off to these descriptions. Hundred so percent. Yeah, Absolutely, hundred percent. All I'll have to do is, please. 
<laughs> Moist glaze. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, we got Alan in the chat. He's saying, damn it, slower, Nick. <laughs> I just said, I really hope our fellow cod developer Joanne is listening to this because the word's moist. Yeah, I know. I know people don't like that word, so I thought I'd use it. <laughs> but no, I wanted to explain because I did it at the beginning, but uh, what salty tadpoles meant. So basically, that's our listener base. So we actually oh, nice. call our listeners salty tadpoles. And... Uh, I mean, like I said earlier, I can either explain why they're called salty tadpoles or you can use your imagination and come up with the answer. <laughs> the way that this whole event has gone. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I also do defend it by saying we are all made of salty tadpoles. That's why. You're not wrong. <laughs> Very fair. Unless we go, yeah. unless we go into some weird futuristic thing where we're somehow bioengineered in labs, you never know. Could happen. You never Which, know. Yeah. It's possible with Gerald, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so should we should we take us out with a couple of stories of the week, James? Uh, I think we should. Yeah. Oh, well, you're breaking up a little bit, James. A wonderful. Oh. Did that? That's probably where I jump screen. Am I clear now? Yes. So this... it is. Am I, now am I I'm crap? now I'm intelligent okay. now because I've got my glasses on. So, <clears throat> shall I go first with my okay. story? Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah, we got you. Why not? Oh yeah, you've got it all. You've gone for that secretarial look. I know. Because <laughs> I need glasses <laughs> to read. <laughs> yes. I mean, we did say about porn, didn't we? So <laughs> I, was just say we're, I was just about to say we're, we're sliding to possible porn territory here. <laughs> One thing I will say, because this is actually, I'm feeling rather brave doing this, talking on um, a live stream, because normally, because I'm actually dyslexic and I've really struggled to read out loud. So I'm doing this. And I kind of feel all right about doing it because it's for cancer. So, you know, you know, you've got, you've got this. We, yeah. You've so, got but this. you know, if I Power stumble, through. if I stumble or get a little bit tongue tied, then and I know James will be fine, but you know, just bear with me, bear with me, please. If it all goes horrible, I'm, don't worry. Just think of porn. Yeah. That'll do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will. <laughs> right. So this is a very British uh, story of the week. So, <laughs> oh, and it's bothering the microphone. Hold on. So, Nick, I'm not sure if you realize, um, but our queen is having her 70th year of uh, being queen coming up. God. So, I know. Can you imagine doing one job for 70 years? It's insane, isn't it? I, I really can't believe I can't believe that is hard. Sorry, my phone's interfering with the mic, so I do apologise. I hope it's not too in irritating. So, Heinz, which is... Um, do you have Heinz in America? We do. Uh, ours is way crappier than the British version, though, because ours is loaded with high fructose corn syrup. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not good. But then ours is probably loaded with a load of sugar, so it's... Anyway, so Heinz un uh, unveils HM sauce and salad queen. So, instead of salad cream to mark the platinum jubilee cuz i'm i'm almost certain that the queen when she was sitting there on the throne year 1 she was thinking i know i really want to be a condiment one year <laughs> you know <laughs> mm. <clears throat> i mean I, i'm already as soon as i've as soon as you've said what they're doing i might just shoot me now but they just shoot me now stage already <laughs> and this is from the Sky News, not from the Metro, just so you know. So the condiments Crap. will yeah, the condiments will be available on supermarket shelves this week. So I assume literally this week, ahead of parties, picnics, and parades over the four day bank holiday weekend in June. Because uh we're getting the Thursday, Friday, and then obviously Saturday, Sunday off because of the Jubilee, so which is lovely. Two of the UK's best-known condiments are getting a royal makeover. 
to make the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Heinz is releasing unlimited, oh sorry, a limited edition bottles of HM sauce and Salad Queen to mark Her Majesty's 70 years on the throne. They're going to be available on supermarket shelves from this week ahead of parties. Okay, it's it's literally repeating itself. I mean, does every newspaper actually write for the same place? Um, after the, this is yeah, metro I think worthy. so. Yeah, I think so. I think they still the stories from the metro. There we go. After the after the contents have been splashed on helpings of Coronation Street. Coronation Street. Fuck yeah. US listeners are there. What? Who? It's a TV show, people. Come on, give, cut Gemma some slack. She's not yet had the ultimate porn based slip up. She's been saying condiments. It could have gone horribly wrong. Yeah, it could have. the Queen as well. She's done well. Come on. <laughs> so, Coronation Chicken and Bucking ham sandwiches and bottles could serve a saucy souvenir. Ooh, saucy. Oh. <laughs> um, Heinz Senior Manager Oh, Ank von Hanstein, I think, you know, let's go with that, said, this is an extraordinary moment for the Queen and the great British public. And mm-hmm. we want to celebrate this with two of our most well beloved historical sources. So I'm going to see if there's anything else, but uh, I think um, releasing limited edition bottles in time for the Jubilee felt like the perfect fit. We hope our customers enjoy the celebration. Uh, celebra- celebratory <laughs> this time see i told you i warned you <laughs> these amazing designs that are you know going to mark the occasion um and they just add a squeeze of fun to the jubilee celebrations however however one is celebrating so that will do I don't want to talk about that any, you know, I don't want to read that anymore because we've pretty much got the gist of it. So, yeah. uh, how do, I mean, how do my, we feel? My, my, my will to live almost went, but it has, it's held on. Um, it, the strange thing is they will become like collector's items, possibly. Yeah. Maybe you know, the that will ones. happen. I mean, we'll probably all be dead be, but before they ever become, you know, anything that's worthwhile because there'll be thousands upon thousands of these things, I'm sure, sent out. But, bit of fun i guess yeah exactly so i don't think we got much more time now have we so so we, we had one more donation come in uh 37 from michelle enjoyed the segment love your accents thank you very much thank and 37 you. in you, a row <laughs> and we are at 71 77 74 ladies and gentlemen steamrolling toward that ten thousand dollar halfway barrier uh, so let's keep smashing our way forward. Please, uh, before you guys run away, just please let them know where they can find Talking Quads. Qua, qua, geez, Talking Codswallop on the internet. <laughs> well, to be fair, first of all, you just pronounced Codswallop correctly. Uh, most impressed. Americans really struggle with that. They say Codswallop. <laughs> Codswallop. Swa- well, swa- <laughs> yeah. Swallop. Swallop seems to be. I do consume a lot of British media, so maybe it's just excellent. (laughs) Definitely, yeah, it's good. So on all social media, so Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, we're at Codswallop Pod. So that's uh, C O L L O P P O D. There we go. (laughs) Um, And also, you can find us on pretty much any of the platforms that you know you can you know, for podcast advice. Our home, so to speak, is Podbean. So if you'd like to mm-hmm. subscribe Love there, Podbean. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do too. I really do. They actually do look after everybody at, you know, Podbean. So. Every single year, Shannon uh, from yeah. Podbean, uh, she has us featured. Well, when I was on Epic Film Guys, it used to be Epic Film Guys, but now uh, my cooking show, she features us every year for the week of the live stream for right. the cure to help to to promote the event and everything it's uh, like, uh, unbelievable debt of gratitude to them it, they're just amazing 
Yeah, because yeah, we were featured just recently as well. So, on yep. you know, not to gloat, but our numbers did uh, rise up quite a bit. So, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of we've kind of got the audience ish now that you know a four year old podcast should have you know rather than so seven. Not you're up to seven now. Yeah, yeah, yes. we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're We're all trying. here We're tonight, people. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Well, thank you so much, Gemma and James, for being here. You're both amazing. Thank, thank, thank you for, for being here us. to help us raise money. 